Testing Topaz Gigapixel AI. Today I will talk about the Topaz Gigapixel upscaler and the new updates, including the generative models, as well as its strengths and weaknesses. I will drag an image to uh, the interface. I mostly use Topaz to upscale AI images, which are often generated at sizes around 10 to 24 pixels. You can use the mouse wheel to uh, zoom in and out. On the right, you have uh, a few settings. You can upscale the image two times, four times, or up to six times, or use a custom scale factor. Most of the time, I just use the four times upscaler for AI images. Then you have different upscale models that you can use. Click on the lightning icon. It will automatically select the model. In this, in this case, it selected the standard model. However, you can choose different models to see which one gives better results. Uh, for the preview, um, you can click and hold with the left mouse button to see the before and after. Use a slider to compare the two or view them side by side depending on what is more comfortable uh, for you. As you can see, it uh, does improve the image, but it, sometimes it also adds some artifacts. So you need to try different models until you find one that you like. Uh, for this image, the art and computer graphics uh, model could work well. Uh, for the preview, um, I like to use the first option where I hold the mouse to see the before and after. What's new in Topaz are these generative models that are still in beta, um, so they may have some bugs. Take this redefined beta model, which claims to add realistic details. Um, I will click on the lightning icon to get the auto settings for it. Now it says to click on the image to render a small preview. I can click on the area where I want to see the preview, such as the face in this case, and it will take a few seconds depending on your video card. On the RTX 4090, it took about 10 seconds. Uh, however, when I use this model, I cannot click on the image to see the before version because it will create another preview. Instead, I will use the eye icon to view the before and after. It has added some extra details, and of course, the image is now four times larger. If you click on export, it will redefine and upscale the entire image, provided you have a good video card. Alternatively, you can use the cloud rendering option, which will cost you some credits, and it will show you how many minutes it takes depending on the image size. You can see here at the top how many credits you have. I have a good video card, so I will just export the image. Here you can add a prefix or a suffix. I will leave the word up for upscale. And then you can choose the folder where to save it, as well as the format and color space you want. Click save when you're ready and be prepared to uh, wait a few uh, minutes. On my card, it took about two minutes, which is two times faster than the time they offered for cloud rendering. It will say done when it's ready. If I go to the export folder, you can see that I have the upscaled version. It's not bad for an upscaler but it could be better. And in some areas it did a great job, but in other areas, not so much. So let's go back and check what other options we have. Uh, we have a slider for creativity, so I can increase that. It will, it will warn me that it will reset the preview, which is okay. So I click and wait. When it's ready, I click on the eye to see the before and after. It made the image a little smoother, but lost some contrast. Let me try increasing the creativity to four. Okay, now the image is more different, but it tried to make the alien look more human. Let's see if I can do something about that. We can enable advanced settings. Here you have some extra options uh, to play with, as well as a field where you can add a description. Uh, let's see if describing the image helps or not. Um, I'll click on the image again to get another preview. The description seems to help a little, but not much. The face looks okay, and the ornaments on the throne are better, but the decoration on the clothes... Um, doesn't seem to look any better. Let's see how much the prompt influences the result. If I set creativity to maximum and try to change the color of the alien in the description, let's test it. Okay, it's not green, so the description didn't affect the result that much. It added a lot of details, but they are all over the place. It even added details where it shouldn't have. It kind of blended the cloth with the alien skin, so full creativity uh, made it look worse. Just out of curiosity, Let's export the image to get the entire image refined. And the first thing I noticed is that the face looks different from the face I saw in the preview. I assumed that what I see in the preview is what I would get, but it seems that's just not the case. So yes, it added a lot of details, but it still somehow seems a little blurry, like a blend between images. I'm not sure, but it has lost some quality. As you can see, it hallucinated a lot and tried to create all kinds of things and textures. For me, this image is not really usable. Uh, so maybe I should stick with the automatic settings for now until they improve the model and perhaps play around with different prompts. 
to see if that helps. Let's try a different type of image, like this cute bunny. Um, for this image, I can use the basic image settings and the result is great. I get a nice quality image. You can try the art model. And as you can see, I get a clear, sharp image, which is quite useful. I can also try the refine model on it to see what it does. It worked well with the refine model too. It added a little glow around some areas, which you can see around the eyebrow. Still, the standard models are my favorites in this case. Let's test it on a 3D render. And the good part is that it adds uh, sharpness and detail, but in some areas added too much sharpness. If you check this, this area, you can see it's a little uh, excessive. Sometimes you want something soft and smooth. Uh, not all the time do you need it to be sharp. Now let me try the standard. Uh, standard model, and it seems to work better. It uh, It is sharper, but not over sharpened. And when you want something subtle, um, you can also go with high fidelity. Let me also try a macro photo of this bug. I actually got Topaz products a few years back for macro photos because it's hard to get them sharp, like in this case when I didn't use the flash, resulting in a bit of camera movement. However, with the standard model, I got a little fix, and it's more clear and sharp. Now let's test the refine model as well. I will go with the automatic settings. The result is okay, but it also adds details where the background is blurred, which I don't need. For the last image tested, let's go with a portrait of a woman. This is a computer generated image, so I will try using the art model. However, it somehow loses realism. It adds some sharpness, but the same problem occurs where I don't want it. Let's try high fidelity since it's more subtle but there isn't much of a difference. Now let's try the redefine model. This time, the details are great, except for the skin area. The problem is that I have too much sharpness in the skin and the slider for sharpness and texture is already at minimum. It would be great if they added an option in the future to reduce sharpness, but I guess it's a bit harder to control. I have the same issue sometimes when I use Comfy UI. I also tried using the face recovery function, but in this case, it made things worse. It's okay to use if there are small faces in a photo as it can recover them, but when you already have a good face, it can make it look worse. Um, let me export the image. As you can see, this area should be blurry, not sharp, which is one of the problems. The good thing is that in some areas like the goggles and hair, it added nice details, which I really like. Again, the downside is that the skin texture is messed up sometimes, so you'll need to do some Photoshop work afterward. So this is the image upscaled with the Topaz generative model, and this image I upscaled with the Comfy UI and Flux model. You can find out how I do that on my main channel, Pixaroma, in the Comfy UI series. Notice how Topaz didn't take the blurred background into account while the Flux model did. Also for the skin, this is the Topaz result, and this is from the Flux model. Topaz is easier to use compared to the steps it takes to learn Comfy UI, for example. Additionally, to run Flux, you need a good video card. It is still in beta, so I'm sure they will find a way to improve it since I see updates each week on my Topaz software. Let's hope they fix that soon. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Leave a like or a comment if you found something useful. Have a great day.